Hey guys, I'm here in Long Beach and I'm excited to be sharing with you the new Turn HSD. I'm really excited about this bike because it's got all sorts of features to it that work well for so many different people. And let's check it out. So one of the first things that's really exciting about the HSD is the size of riders that it can accommodate. So it can accommodate a rider from four foot 11 to six foot five. Now that's pretty significant. In the shop, it's quite often that we have trouble fitting riders on the shorter side and quite often on the taller side as well. So it's really nice to have that adjustability and that, that really comes from the way the frame is designed. Uh, you have this seat tube that kind of angles back. So as you go up, it kind of gives you more space this way. And you have these dual adjustable seat posts that pushes it up and the handlebars are adjustable as well. Now looking at the frame, it might look kind of similar to another bike that Turn has called the GSD. And it's really built based on some of the experience that they had with the GSD and some of the experience that they had with their other model called the Vectron. But they really wanted to make this bike that just appeals to a much wider audience. So based on those two models, they kind of brought together the experience and a lot of the feedback and they introduced this HSD, you know, the GSD, the acronym kind of stands for get stuff done or HSD, not really sure what that is, like haul stuff daily, that could be one way to put it. But it really has a lot of the same features, really solid frame. It's available starting at a pretty low price point at $3,200. I mean, a low price point for a quality e-bike. But the bike uh, comes standard kind of without this front rack and the bag. So everything else is standard on here. This particular model is called the S8i. The entry version is the P9, the derailleur version. This has a belt drive and an internal hub. And then they have one other model called the S Plus, and that has a belt drive and a fully automatic gear system, which is really special. And there aren't too many bikes out there that use that type of system. So it's exciting to see Turn bringing that to the market. So in first looking at the bike, some of the things that are really identifiably different is it's a 20 inch wheeled bike. So they're smaller wheels than you might normally find on a bicycle, but that's what turns really great at, making these compact bikes that still ride like a full size bike. And looking at the frame, when I first see it, it reminds me a lot of the GSD in the way that they use kind of this like truss style system. And it's very reinforced. It's pretty heavy duty, but still relatively lightweight. But I really appreciate that because sometimes you get these bikes and they kind of just flex around, but you really don't get that on this bike. You could really push it pretty hard and it's going to stay in a straight line. And, and that's really important. But a slight departure from the GSD, they have an add-on rack similar to the Vectron. But the thing that's special about this rack is it can carry up to 132 pounds. And that's really significant considering most bike racks are really only designed to carry around 40 pounds, some even less than that. So 132 pounds, it's kind of taking from that concept of carrying another child or just loads of cargo and that sort of thing. Now when they launch this product early next year, their plan is to launch with just the ability to carry a child seat, but they are planning to make available a passenger kit. Don't have too many details on that right now, but it is coming and I think that a lot of people are gonna be really excited about it. So Turn developed their own saddle for this bike and it's a pretty comfortable saddle. We've been riding around a little bit and I found that it, it works really well for this sort of setup. If you see, it's relatively wide and that gives you a lot of support because it does put you in a relatively upright seating position. And then this adjustability for the seat post is really great. So you can adjust to any rider height so in talking about this adjustability concept, the stem is adjustable as well, which means that you can adjust the handlebars fore and aft. So this is what's called the Andro stem, and it's made specifically by turn. So you can push the handlebars forward, or you can pull them backwards. Now in the forward position, it's gonna be a, a little bit more sporty. And then as you pull it back more this way, it's gonna put you in a more upright position. For the tires on the bike, they use the Schwabi Big Apple tires and they're 20 inch by 2.15 and they're what's called balloon tires. So the nice thing about that is you can run them at a little bit of lower pressure 
and it really gives kind of a suspension effect. For the wheels, it's set up on the front with a through axle on this Suntour fork. And this is a pretty beefy fork on this bike and it performs really well. So this is a coil spring fork and it's very low maintenance. It's a through axle, so it's really rigid that way. You do have a lockout on the fork as well, which is, which is nice if you wanted to really optimize your performance on kind of flatter terrain. So this particular model is the S8i, and it's the eight because it has the eight speed internal hub. So this is a Nexus eight speed internal hub. So all the gears are inside, makes it really easy to manage, great for urban environments, and it's really nice because it's also paired with the Gates carbon belt drive. So you don't have to worry about any grease. It's really low maintenance. Now all the HSDs are set up with the Bosch Generation 3 motors. The 8i as well as the P9 both have the Active Line Plus motor, which is 50 Newton meters of torque, performs really well when pedaling without power, and it's a relatively lightweight setup. As this is the Generation 3 motor, it has that larger chain ring, and you could see the motor's a little bit smaller than some of the Generation 2 setup. The Bosch motor system uses a technology called Pedal Assist, and basically what it does is it senses that you're pedaling, and it provides assistance proportionate to your input. And it does so based on three sensors. So it has one sensor that's sensing how fast you're pedaling, another sensing how hard you're pedaling, and lastly, there's one other sensor which senses how fast the bike is going. For the brake levers, they're Magura MT4, and they're two-finger levers, really nice ergonomics to them, and they're adjustable, so they can fit really any rider. So if you have smaller hands, you wanna pull these in, there's a little screw here that you can adjust to pull them closer or further if you have larger hands. So the P9 and the S8i both have Magura MT4 brakes, and it's a dual piston caliper, so one piston on this side and one on the other side, and 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. So provides really good stopping power, plenty for this bike, especially with that extra weight capacity. It can handle it, no problem. One of the great features about the S8i is the Nexus 8-speed hub. And the great thing about an internal hub is you can shift the gears when you're at a standstill. So if you come to a stop, you forgot to shift down, you can shift to whatever gear you need to, to get going. And it's, it's really nice and it feels nice as well. I'm pretty happy with this setup and, and the grips on here, the Ergon grips and it's really comfortable. Something that a lot of people notice when they first put their hands on this bike. Now to turn the system on, we have a power button right here. This is set up with the Purion display, same as the P9 whereas the S Plus has the Intuvia display. So you turn it on, by default it's gonna be in the off position. If we press plus, we go into the first level of assistance. This will give us a 50% boost. The second level, it's about 100%. Third level, it's about 200%. And the top level, it's about 275% assistance, which is pretty significant. And Really at that level, you don't really have to pedal too much to get it going pretty quick. Some of the other details you'll see on the screen is your speedometer. You'll also see the battery life. You also have several different details that show up on this display. If you hold the minus button down, you can cycle through them. So you have the, the tripometer, which is gonna tell you how long you've been riding and that sort of thing. The total distance or, or the odometer. This is based on the assistance level that you're on. Right now on the turbo mode, you have a 38 mile range. Now I should note that this bike currently has a 500 watt hour battery on it, but it comes with a 400 watt hour. The S Plus comes with a 500. So you'll see that number go down a little bit in normal circumstances. So probably something like 30 miles, 32 miles, but still really significant. And if I cycle through the different assistance levels, you'll see the range update. So down to sport, if I go down to eco mode, we can see that number jump way up to 100 miles. One other feature with this display is you have the ability to activate what's called walk assist. So you have this little button down here. If you tap this button and then hold the plus button, you activate the walk assist, which is gonna move the motor and you'll just get a couple miles an hour. 
which is really good if the bike's loaded up, you wanna carry it up a hill or that sort of thing. Lastly, I just wanna note that you have the light activation on here. So this bike has lights that run off of the Bosch system. If you hold the plus button down, you could turn the lights on and off. So you could see this little icon. If I hold it down, the light's gonna come on. So you also have the ability to switch the headlight on or off from the headlight itself. The battery for the SE8i is a 400 watt hour. You could charge the battery on or off the bike. To charge it on the bike, you just open this little port here. To charge it off the bike, you just use the key to remove it from the bike and you could charge it really anywhere. With the 400 watt hour battery, you should generally see somewhere between 25 and 70 miles range. So there's really loads of accessories that are available for the HSD and we're gonna make a separate video showcasing all that, but I wanted to just give you an idea. The child seat is probably one of the most important ones and the ability to fit a child seat and accessories like bags or baskets in this case. This particular seat is the Yep Maxi, but it'll also fit the Yep Next as well as the bow bike seat. Similar to the GSD, the HSD has this special storage function in that it can stand up on its rear end. So you basically just hold the rear brake and just pull the bike backwards like this and the bike just stands up like that. Now, you can also turn the handlebars and fold them down. So. Now keep in mind that the transporter rack on here is a little bit wider than the bike overall. So if you wanted the most minimal storage setup, you probably wanna remove the transporter rack. Thanks so much for checking out the video, guys. Let us know if you have any questions or comments, you know, put them below and I'll be happy to answer them. All right, look forward to seeing you in the future.